my name is Madeline, and today I'm doing my cinema lab, of course. Um, so, I guess mine is kind of different. I don't have a PowerPoint because I hate technology. Um, but I'm just going to talk to you. So, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I love camping, um, as I'm sure a lot of you can relate to it because you're in MBC, so um, camping is something you might all enjoy. If you haven't, you really should because I it's so relaxing, and if you haven't experienced what being out in nature for a couple of days or whatever, it's just something you have to try. Um, it's like an escape. Um, the reason that's why I love camping is it's, there's nothing to be afraid of, there's no noise, there's nothing like media, there's nothing distracting you. And I find like if I didn't have camping or any escapes, so like, like it's just like a constant reminder, it helps me like just remember what's really important in life and what I should really care about. And I think that if I didn't have any AC or camping, I honestly, like, I don't know what I would do. So even though I'm president, I find, like, I'm very easily distracted by things, and sometimes I forget that, oh, I shouldn't be using this because that's unhealthy for the environment. <laughs> so, like, sometimes it's hard, but that's why I camp. And um, one time, I remember I was camping with my dad, and we did a lot of portaging, so we were canoeing. And we were on this one lake, and it was really beautiful. Everything was really nice. But then I look down into the water and it's pretty clear and I saw nothing, like it was just dead. And I was like, Dad, why is there like no, you know, fish or little grass? There's nothing, there's nothing living in it. And I was like, why is that? And he was like, oh, it's dead. Like, like there's nothing growing in the lake. And so I was pretty mad because, you know, we came all this way. I have an empty bath of water at home. I, don't, I came here to like swim in a nice lake. And so I was so mad and I found out that the reason why was because of um, acid rain. And so I know a lot of you guys know what acid rain is. We kind of talked about it in biology class and everything. Um, but I guess that's sort of what my topic is because I was so pissed off by this. I was just like, it just made me, I had so much, my emotion was like up here. It's like, okay, that's what I'll talk about. Um, so basically, um, what is acid rain? It's basically like pollution that breathes, like um, all the greenhouse gases that are emitted from like, automobiles and everything, um, it goes up, okay, you guys know how precipitation works, right? It's like a whole cycle where um, it gets reabsorbed into the atmosphere and then it moves over and then it rains or snows or whatever. Um, so that's basically what's happening except with, um, because of the pollution and off air that we emit, it's going out the chemicals and it's moving out and it's coming down as precipitation, as snow, as fog. Um, and it's polluting our earth. And there's actually two kinds of um, precipitation. There's dry and wet. And wet is basically um, where it's coming down as snow or fog or rain. Um, and then dry is where the environment is drier and then um, it comes down, like the chemicals get um, walked into like dust and things like that. So it comes down like that. Um, so basically like what makes acid precipitation happen, well, you can kind of guess it's anything that burns fossil fuels. Um, so, like, one of the major things are automobiles and, um, you know, like, tall smokestacks and, like, factories and stuff? Well, even though they're meant to, like, go all high up in the sky and get rid of the pollution and put it up there, but then it's just sort of, it's just putting it higher up so you don't see it and then it's getting locked in and it's, um, it's still affecting everything and so a couple of things that affect um, acid precipitation is like wind speed so even though we might not necessarily it's like a global issue right so even places who don't um, use or don't burn as many fossil fuels as like one place might they're still being affected and um, that's because it's um, caused by wind speed and stuff so the u.s is like oh u.s they do all this pollution and everything and, and um it because of wind speed, it kind of comes over to Canada. People are pissed off at that because it's not our fault. They're doing it, right? So um, it's a global issue that's affecting everything. Um, sorry, I'm nervous, so I'm, I'm <laughs> going to look at my nose for a second. Um, but actually, one of the two main um, pollutants that are emitted into the oxygen are sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide. Um, and there's actually a couple of things that are being done to stop acid precipitation. 
and there's this weird thing. I, I guess there's a lot of things that I don't really understand because it's really technical and difficult science, and I'm not that good at science. Um, but there's this weird thing where they can take um, sulfur and they can wash it off the coal, and then they can burn it, and then it's a bit better. But I'm not gonna tell you about that because we can't really, you know, we're not gonna go wash the sulfur off the coal and then burn it. Um, so I guess some things that we can actually do, um, just sort of like any problem, any issue, obviously you know that um, any little thing that people do um, makes a big difference. So and it's true because even though the government are in, they're doing things to help, it depends on us and it depends on the decisions we make because that's what the, the, we're the people they're making their decisions on, right? So they are taking what we're doing in our lifestyle into consideration. Um, everything is so interdependent and everything relies and we rely on each other. Just like an ecosystem, it's, it, if something changes, then um, everything could get ruined. So I think we, a big change needs to happen. Um, and we have, I think we're the next generation, right? So we have to do it. So I think some things that you can do are maybe like carpool and take the bus and hitchhike maybe. <laughs> no. Take it for one, you know. Mr. Brown. <laughs> um, and I think one of the biggest things we can do actually is talk to our parents um, because they have a lot of power over things that we can't do, um, like buying, like, oh, you, you know, they buy the things and your cars, you know, I don't think anyone can buy a car here. So um, you should talk to your parents because a lot of the traditional mindsets, I think, these people who are leading our country, I think they need to be changed. And um, who was it who said that um, that boys are leading our country? Where did he hear that? Well, there's no men leading the world as boys, so we have to, I don't even know where I got that from. It's someone said it, it wasn't me though. But I think that we have to, the adults and everyone who's older than us, they don't know as much as we do sometimes because we're super smart. So I think that talking to your parents and adults is really a crucial part of it. Um, so that's my seminar. I kind of messed it up, but that's okay. okay. So that's it. Okay. So also, everything that I read was that one of the biggest things that you can do and one of the first steps and one of the first things we have to do is to tell people and to get informed on the issue. And so just not for us for the situation because we all know what that is now. Um, but for anything, getting informed and telling people about it, that's the biggest thing you can do almost. So share information, yes. Okay, that's all. If I could dovetail on that, there's something like I, you didn't say where you're camping. I bet anything you're camping at Killarney Provincial Park. I don't. It was you were camping about four and a half hours north of Toronto, and the they had big white rocks around you, and it was very, very pretty. Yeah, the water was super was clear and gorgeous. Yeah. But that's the reason why you know, like taking action is so important because that's a feel better story, not a feel good story. Because in my lifetime, when you went up around that area, which is around Sudbury, it was a moonscape. Now it's a lot more beautiful, and those lakes are coming back. For the very reason that you're saying that they can uh, clean the uh, the products that they're producing and whatnot, and they just have better emission controls. So uh, there's all sorts of uh, potential for correction uh, happening, and, and it's made manifest by that story, like Killarney Provincial Park, where the lakes are still sadly dead, yeah. but coming back. So yeah, yeah, yeah there's definitely a lot of things.